back before I was a birder. I used to walk around in the forest without all this stuff hanging on me like a Christmas tree. But I'm here to tell you about that change that happened in 1999. That, um, that seed that turns into a flower, the flower starts a romance. I like the lyrics of that song. Where's the writer of the song? I like that. Okay, um, I am a tour guide. As a tour guide, you get to sell what people have already bought. You get people who have already paid for their tour and you get to entertain them and tell them all kinds of stories about Suriname's wonderful nature, about the history, about the culture. But pretty soon after becoming a guide, I discovered that I like nature just a little bit more than the also very interesting cultural and history parts. I got quite good at being a guide. Uh, my guests were satisfied. I was satisfied with myself. And by the time I was quite experienced, started in 92, so in 1999, I was a guide for seven years. Um, by that time, my boss called me over and he was like, hey, Sin, there is this group of birders coming. They were here last year and they worked with a different tour operator and things went hopelessly wrong. So they decided to give Suriname another chance and we want to give you the task to hold their hands from the minute they get out of the airplane at the international airport for the full 12 days until they get back on the airplane and you make sure that nothing, absolutely nothing goes wrong. I was like, okay. I was the experienced guy, you know, I was the man, so I could do that. Out of the airplane came this gentleman. His name is Steve Hilty. And he is the author of Birds of Venezuela, the author of Birds of Colombia, which makes the 11 people that were with him lower their voice when they talk about him. He's Steve. He's like this living legend. He's like, oh. And Steve was very, very, very good in what he did. So good that I was completely left out. He had these 11 people that wanted to see birds. I thought I knew a thing or two about birds. Well, they spoke a completely different language. They spoke English, but they spoke bird language. So birds had all kinds of body parts that I was never aware of before. They had napes. <laughs> and they had primaries, and they had mandibles, and they had tarsi, and I was like, what is this man talking about? Um, they, d they did not have normal colors. A gray bird would be scenarios, and another gray bird would be slady. And another bird that looked gray to me would be dusky. I was like, these people are crazy. But Steve knew birds so well, he would explain when he hears the bird what the bird would do. And to me, it looked like the birds did what he said. That's how well he knew what was going to happen. Because you would go, something would go, tweet, 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 and you're looking for a bird. And he's like, it's going to be sitting at eye level. It's on a horizontal twig that's very thin. It's brown and it's hard to find. But every time you hear that tweet, tweet, watch for a little orange flash because the inside of its beak is orange. And you look for it, and then you find it exactly at eye level, not 10 centimeters higher, not 10 centimeters lower. You'll find it. And there's this other bird. He's like, OK, I'm going to play back. That's what we use the speaker for. We use the recorder to record the sounds with the directional microphone. We play it back. I have my collection in my Blackberry. Play it back from the speaker, and the bird will come in to see who's singing in its territory. And obviously, the binoculars are to see him from close up. He would play back a bird and he would say, okay, this bird is probably going to flash very close by and he's going to sit somewhere where you don't see him. But watch for the brown color because that's all there is. It's a brown bird. And he would play it back and... <laughs> I hated him. <laughs> I hated him for coming to Suriname and knowing my birds... He didn't speak a single word of Dutch. He didn't speak a single word of Franantongo. He knew everything about every bird. 
And that's what his guests wanted to know. So I, I was the man before. I became the man who would see that the bus was ready. The man <laughs> who could help you carry your bag, man. I hated him because you can't meet a man like this and not admire him for his knowledge. And I pretty soon, after that first feeling, found out that it was not his fault that I didn't know my birds. So I was like, somebody should step forward and get to know these birds. Somebody. So I stepped forward and got to know birds. On that first trip that I was with Steve, I got very much acquainted with his telescope because he was carrying all this stuff around, busy, and uh, I didn't have binoculars, so I was like, hey, can I help you carry the scope? He explained to me how it works, and uh, my job would be any bird that would sit, sit still for longer than 10 seconds, I would scope it, and as fast as possible, I would step aside and say, in the scope. All these birders are very well trained. They know how this birding thing works. And they would line up and each of them would look for five or six seconds. So within one minute, everybody had seen the bird through the telescope and I would stand there hoping that the bird would still be there if the last person had looked for me to look again. And I started seeing wonderful... Where's Ray? I started seeing wonderful things. He wanted me to see wonderful birds, but I saw the rings of Saturn. I saw wonderful orchids way up in trees. Scopes are wonderful. You can see many. There's a penumbral eclipse of the moon going on right now at this very moment. I want to run out and look at the moon. But OK. Um, I learned that Suriname has 740 species of birds. About one third, about 250 of those, have a local name, a Saranantongo name. That's how well we, as a country, know our birds. About 40 of those are special enough for people to come here and look for them. What we call Guyanan endemics. They're endemic to the Guyanan shield, which we share with French Guyana, Guyana to the west, northern Brazil, eastern Venezuela. Um, obviously, the people that come here will look at every bird, but these are the ones you high five on when you see them. And a group like Steve's comes here for 12 to 14 days. They see about 400 species of birds. That's more than half of what's on Suriname's list. They see about 20 mammals. Many of you live in Suriname. Have you seen 20 mammals? Can you name 20 mammals? I couldn't at that time, but this was really a big wake-up call. After that, the world was full of birds all of a sudden. Republic, where I spent all my vacations when I, go when I went to school. Yes, I do remember you when we went to school. You were at Republic too, weren't you? Republic turned out to be full of different species of toucan. This picture was taken at Republic. Kola Creek, where many of us spent our weekends, has a number of different species of woodpeckers that just fly around over there. This guy is a yellow-hooded blackbird. And this picture was taken within two kilometers from where we're standing right now. The bird must have been there all the time. I didn't see it, do you? I was especially happy when I saw this bird the first time. He doesn't look as handsome as the other three. But I want to play you a recording of its voice. Oh, okay, everybody knows what he sounds like. Must be people looking at their phones. No, it's me. <laughs> but yeah, I heard this bird so many times. I was so happy when I got to see it, especially when you see him doing a song. It's really nice. We have a bird in the interior that has a tail that is longer than the bird. Can you imagine? It's called a long-tailed tyrant. Very cute little white banded swallows who like to be on the river. There's so many wonderful things that you start seeing after you get into 
I call it nature watching, bird watching. It's, the birds are only part of what you see. For this poison dart frog, for instance, is just one example of the many, many other wonderful things you see when you go out and watch nature carefully. I wanted you to, so, to see this bird, but most of all I want you to hear this bird because it's my favorite bird song. was music designed for entertainment. <laughs> well, there's a number of birds in the forest that when they sing, they make me dance. I'm not sure if, I'm quite sure they were around before people were. But this guy is called the musician wren. And um, the house wren that we call Gadocho lives in all our houses in Paramaribo. He likes to sing very, very early in the morning, six. 6.15, imagine standing in the forest and hearing, hearing a mesmerizing song like this one. This bird lives in Paramaribo. The picture was taken in the garden of the crematorium at the Sofirat Monstrat. It's one of the two or three hundred parrots that sleeps around the Academy Siekenhuis, the hospital, and 299 of them are green. This is a special type of albinism that occurs in birds, and that is called a lutino. Not a special species, but a very special individual, so to speak. When you can see the color of a bird's eyes, that's when you know that you've seen him very well. This is a common species, a a snail kite. And um, yeah, with that red eye and with that beak open like that, you can see that he is a bird of prey. You can see. That is a majestic little bird. So, I have a number of messages that I want you to take with you because of my little story over here. First of all, basically I've said it already. My eyes are open now. My ears are open now. I was standing back here just now waiting for my presentation to arrive and I heard an owl fly over. Barn all it screamed twice. <coughs> and there's Hindustani people in here. It's the one that your grandmother tells that you should curse at it when it flies over your house. <laughs> a big white owl. Um, so all of a sudden you're aware of many things that you were not aware of before. It's wonderful to have somebody from abroad to come and show you your birds and open your eyes in your country like that. Second of all, there's money to be made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's money to be made. There's, um, there's thousands of bird watchers. Many of them travel the world to see species. They, have, they are quite demanding because they want somebody who can show them what they're looking for, can give them information on the level they're looking for. But if, as a country, we're willing to invest in tourism, willing to work on all the things these people need for that small niche market, there's money to be made. My belly was a lot smaller before I became a bird watcher. <laughs> Third, the better you get to know nature, understand it, observe it, the better you understand how important it is to preserve it and how vulnerable nature is. So you hear everybody screaming, preserve nature, keep the lungs of the world the way they are. But for me, this specific, more in-depth view of nature enriches me a lot. And last, the, I didn't put it on the slide, but many of you will meet people like I met Steve, people that know a lot more than you do in your field. And the feeling of starting to hate them is a pretty normal feeling, I guess, but if you can manage to turn that around into positivity, you can use them as a stepping stone and enhance your own being. Two blue-headed parrots waving goodbye.
Thank you.